Hello again and welcome to the latest web worship or the next it depends if you're watching them in order I suppose but welcome to this web worship and uh, we are looking at the theme of narrowing the gaps of our lives and this is the second part we begin with just a couple of short pieces of worship so I invite you just to join in if you know it <coughs> First one is Purify My Heart. Uh, it's 921 if you use a mission phrase. Purify my heart, let me be as gold, a precious. as gold, pure gold, refiner's fire, my heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you. I choose to be holy, set apart for you, my master, ready to do your will. <coughs> Purify my heart, cleanse me from within. Cleanse me from my sin, deep within, refiner's fire. My heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be. As we come together, let's just pause in, in a moment's uh, reflecting, reflection and prayer. Let's pray. Father God, we seek pure hearts, clean lives, holy hands, all to put to work for your service and your glory, wherever we are. So as we come to reflect on how we can narrow the gaps in our lives, Lord, give us insight and wisdom into ourselves, a willingness to engage with you and hope for our future, the fullness of life that we can reach in Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. <coughs> this is a, a, an older one. 319 if you use the mission phrase. <coughs> I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold I'd rather be his than have riches untold I'd rather have Jesus than houses or land I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hands than to be the king of a vast domain and be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. I'd 
rather have Jesus than man's applause. I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy name. Than to be the king of a vast domain and be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. than honey from out of the comb. He's all that my hungering spirit needs. I'd rather have Jesus and let him lead. Than to be the king of a vast domain and be held in sin's dread sway. To narrow the gap between the compartments of our lives as we considered last time, it's, none, it's not achieved by a set of simple tools or techniques. There isn't a, a, a ten point plan. There's no simple solution. It's a work. It takes effort. It takes time. It takes determination too. There's a concept in Celtic spirituality that there are places in this world where the divide between the spirit world and the physical world that we inhabit are, are thin. Places of permeation, <coughs> where things can slip between the two. We can have a deeper awareness uh, of the spiritual presence. As we think about narrowing the gaps in our lives, it's that sense of thinning the boundaries so that we can live fully integrated spiritual lives and physical lives. We begin that process by allowing God to change us. And it is in this that I would uh, invite you to consider uh, as, we, as we come together in this episode. The hardest thing I've found about doing these things it's not the doing of them, it's actually the editing of them. I look and listen at the initial recording and I keep thinking, who is that old man? That's not me. I don't look like that. I don't sound like that. Then I pass that comment on to Karen and she goes, yeah, you do, you really do. So I have to face, <coughs> I have to face that truth that our sometimes internal perceptions are, are different from what the world sees. The first step in narrowing or thinning the divides of our lives is to allow God to, to change our perception, to enable us to face that moment of revelation. And even if we don't like what we see, to know that it's not how things will remain. God has a plan. But we need to participate with that plan. And here we all fail, face critical choices. We all like to think that we would be so very faithful. That we would go with it. But that is seldom the case. And today we're going to experiment if I can edit in Bethany doing a reading for us. So I'm going to just pause from Matthew chapter 19 and starting at verse 16. The rich young man. Now a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, 
What good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied. There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, obey the commandments. Which ones? The man inquired. Jesus replied, Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Honour your father and mother, and love your neighbour as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go, sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad, because he had great wealth. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Peter answered him, We have left everything to follow you. What then will be there for us? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. At the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father or mother, or children, or fields, for my sake, will receive a hundred times as much, and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. Amen. The rich young ruler. This man was faithful. He kept the law. He honoured his parents. In the eyes of the law, he was one of the good guys. But he wanted more. He wanted a closer connection with God. He wanted a deeper assurance. How can I be sure of eternal life? <coughs> his response to the challenge that Jesus laid before him was to leave heavy-hearted, saddened, because the cost was too great for him to make. God may not ask us to sell up everything and give it away, but he may ask us to face those parts of our lives that we find hard, difficult the bits that we treasure too much those bits to see if we're willing to let them go because if we can't do that how can we receive from God the new thing that he wants to place in our hands if our hands are already full so we can leave turn our back walk away saddened dejected but there are other things too that we could do. When Paul was interviewed by Felix the governor during one of his extensive imprisonments that's recorded <coughs> in Acts, Acts chapter 24, it says that several days later Felix came with his wife Drusilla, who was a Jewess. He sent for Paul and listened to him as he spoke about faith in Christ Jesus. As Paul discoursed on righteousness, self-control and the judgment that comes, Felix was afraid and said, That's enough for now. You may leave. When I find it convenient, I will send for you. At the same time, he was hoping that Paul would offer him a bribe, so he sent for him frequently and talked with him. When two years had passed, Felix was succeeded by Porcius Festus, but because Felix wanted to grant a favour to the Jews, he left Paul in prison. Perhaps he wanted to grant a favour because of his wife's uh, 
faith. Felix seems to have been someone who gets right to the edge of change, gets ready to make that, that step moving forward and then just pulls back. At the end he, he can't do it. <coughs> like a child at a swimming pool being encouraged to dive in, gets right to the edge and you curl your toes over the edge and then no you can't do it and back off. Sometimes saying, God to you, saying yes to God is a scary thing. It's going to bring change to us. But also with that excitement and fulfilment. Some almost get there. And then back away. In our modern connected world, others feel the need to change that there's something amiss in their lives. And they, they get onto social media. And they try and garner the, the collected wisdom of all. It can be almost like a virtual Jeremy Kyle uh, process. Everybody putting in their tuppence worth. Everybody giving advice. Everybody having a view. <coughs> and getting advice is not a bad thing. Proverbs reminds us, 1919, Listen to advice and accept instruction. And in the end you will be wise. But that all depends on who you ask for advice. At the end of it all, who are you going to trust? Whose voice are you going to trust? God or the advice of the world? Ultimately, the choice of growth and growing closer to God and becoming more complete is yours, is mine, is nobody else's. There's a Welsh hymn that's sung at every um, rugby match, international rugby match. <coughs> and when we think of the Welsh people, perhaps the men in particular, we think of hard playing, hard working men, often associated with the mines and heavy industry. And one of those men wrote Callan Lan, Daniel James worked much of his life in the iron and foundry works of the Ronda. But he was also a poet and a hymn writer. In that hard environment he penned the hymn Cal and Lan. In Welsh, obviously. So it's open to some translation. And we have used it in the church. We used the tune Cal and Lan uh, uh, for uh, Love Divine or Love's Excelling. And that got me on a, this, this journey of, of what was what was this hymn? So I kind of had a, a, a ferret about on uh, the internet. <coughs> and this is a wonderful hymn. Such powerful words. Uh, I will do my best to try and put over. I'll not ask for life that's easy. Gold and pearls so little mean Rather seek a heart that's joyful Heart that's honest Heart that's clean Heart that's clean and filled with virtue Fairer far than lilies white Only pure hearts praise God truly Praise him all the day and night. Why should I seek earthly treasure? On swift wings they fly away. Your clean heart brings greater riches that for eternal life shall stay. Heart that's clean and filled with virtue, fairer far than lilies white. Only pure hearts praise God truly, praise Him all the day and night. Dawn and sunset, still I'm searching. Rising on a wing of song, give me, Lord, through Christ my Saviour, that clean heart for which I long. 
heart that's clean and filled with virtue, fairer far than lilies white. Only pure hearts praise God truly, praise Him all the day and night. Powerful words from a man who, who spent his life in furnace areas and, and with pollution and, and pig iron and whatever he was working with. To rise above that and seek a pure and clean heart. And so to narrow the gaps in our lives, to thin the boundaries, to let God shine through more of us, we need to ask ourselves a question. What kind of heart do you want? And are you willing to let that work of refining happen in you? If we do, then we will begin to thin those boundaries to dismantle the compartments of our lives and become fully integrated and whole people. I hope that is the desire of your heart and the journey of your faith. I invite you to, to take a moment with me in prayer. <coughs> Let us pray. Father God, when we look through Scripture, we find that it is not our wealth or our status or standing that impresses you. It's our hearts. It's our willingness to seek holiness, to seek you in us. And so we pray that you would Teach us how to be willing to take that leap of faith with you. To allow your work to be done in us. Hear the prayers of our hearts. The cries of our souls. We thank you that you are a listening God. A God who answers prayer. And a God who responds to our needs. So we hear these wonderful words, this word of promise that in Jesus Christ our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Father, we pray for friends and family for those confined and feeling the pressure of restriction at this time. We pray for our separated lives, that somehow you would hold us together, that distance can be overcome, that we share a bond of love with family and friends that can never be broken. We pray with thanksgiving for all those in the, the care sector, in the hospitals and care homes looking after the sick and the vulnerable. We know that they have put themselves at risk and a number have died through this epidemic. We thank you for their courage and their faithfulness. We pray your blessing on all of them and their families. And as we move to closer hopefully closer to a time of an easing of restriction. Let us be mindful 
of the well-being of all, including ourselves, and act wisely. Lord, we seek your guidance for those who lead us and make these big decisions. We pray that you would give them insight. You would give them wisdom. That in, by your spirit you would speak into their hearts what is the best thing to do. And give them the courage to do it. Hear these our prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> I was rifling through my folder and came upon a real golden oldie that I haven't done for years um, and years uh, I'm not even sure if it's in the hymn book uh, it's that old but it's one of these ones that as soon as you hear it it's like a, a, a religious earworm you'll be singing this tune for the rest of your day When upon life's wills you are tempest tossed when you feel discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you'll keep on singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven or your home on high. So count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. So count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings. For God is a God who blesses us richly, beyond our understanding. And at times we just need to stop and count. May the God of grace and love ever hold you in his peace, in his mercy, in his parenting embrace, now and always. Amen.